I think we should get into what I've coined here the pot principle. Uh, it's especially important for Potlum in Omaha, of course. Uh, it's a bet sizing calculator similar to the one that I had shown you guys in the first video, and that I'll probably review before we get into the Hold'em Manager Replayer example hands in the third video. And yeah, this pot principle is basically illustrating the odds that you're giving your opponents when you make pot size bets. And I've added a point here I've called or I've termed three timing or three timing and that's basically simplifying the situation for you guys who may not always remember the general bet sizing rules that we covered in the first video. So for example you get in NL100 you get two limpers and actions on you with your pair of queens and if you're scratching your head thinking oh shit what did Dylan say how much was it uh, four times two times what three uh, hell you know uh, you know it, instead of just remembering of course it's four times the big blind plus one per limper namely you raise that in that situation up to six you can very very simply say three times previous action plus one per previous call or limper. Very, very simple principle, three time it. So in that case, of course, you're going to raise it to five, which is almost six, and it's very similar uh, concerning the odds that you're giving your opponents. So when in doubt, three time it. That means three time the previous bet, three time um, the previous call, whatever. And you'll be very, very close to this pot principle. Of course, you can also just hit hit the pot button and you're good to go given the action of the player who provided the last action in essence always two to one odds and he needs 33 percent equity in order to break even in the long run in order to illustrate that to you guys I will go ahead and use this calculator and we'll go through a few scenarios we've got here Again, our NL100, let's say we're playing pot limit Omaha for 100 maximum buy-in of 100 big blinds. So, PLO100. When a lot of you guys think pot size raises, you're probably thinking you just bet the amount that's in the pot at that point. And sometimes that will be correct, especially post-flop, of course, if you're the first to act, you make a pot size bet, there's 10 in the middle, you just bet 10, that's of course clear. But, if there is action before you on any given any given sh uh, street, also preflop, you are not betting the amount that's in the middle, you're following this principle here, pot, total pot at the current moment, plus two times the amount for you to call. It's very, very important. So if we're going to make a pot size bet here, okay, we've got the small blind post, big blind post. How much would we actually make as an open raise, as a two bet, i.e. the first raise preflop in a pot limit Omaha scenario? If you're saying 150, you're, of course, completely wrong <laughs> because it is twice the amount to call, namely two, plus... 150 for a total of 350. Good. And what does that mean? Okay, this idea of a pot, pot size raise, say, is that you're giving the player before you two to one odds, namely he has to break even one time in three. He needs to have 33.33% equity in order to make that call and break even in the long run just based on pot odds alone. That's the idea of a pot size raise. It's not that you bet the amount in the pot necessarily, it's that you're giving the player before you exactly two to one odds. And that you're not going to get with a so-called bet such as just betting the pot. He here only needs 14.3% to make that same call. So again, 350, twice the amount to call, plus the current pot size, gives the opponent before you 33% uh, 
uh, pot, I'd say. Exactly two to one. So one time in three he needs to hit in order to break even in the long run. So let's say you raise it up, open raise, pot limit Omaha to 350, and the next guy's on. So what's his pot size raise amount? Without a cold caller here, we'll just keep it simple. Well, it is, I'll just have another dramatic pulse for you guys to add that up. What's the current pot size? Don't look at that. <laughs> okay, so five, five big blinds. In NL100 or PLO100, of course, the big blind is exactly um, the monetary amount, so $5 if you're playing in US dollars. And our re raise amount would be twice the amount to call, 7 plus 5, 12. Giving the open raiser how much? Good, 33% to make that 3 bet call. 2 to 1 odds I'm giving this player. He needs 33.33% equity if he were to go all in to make that call. That's the idea. So let's say there's a guy behind us who really likes his double suited ace jack 10 hand, <laughs> as he should, and he decides, good, we're not going to be three betting here, gentlemen. We're going to be four betting, of course, and that's going to be how much for him to make a pot size re raise, i.e., four bet pre flop. Well, total pot, as you see here, is 17, plus twice the amount to call is 24. Here we go 41. Now, if he's with a 100 big blind stack, let's assume that everybody does have a 100 big blind stack here. He, as opposed to no limit Omaha, he can't push right here for his full stack. The maximum amount that he can bet is capped at 41 big blinds. And that's, that's as high as he can go in so-called pot limit games. That would apply also if you're playing, let's say, five card draw or even seven cards, yeah, seven card stud somewhere for pot limit that that also exists, uh, not necessarily online, but definitely live uh, house games, etc. And yeah, this principle would then apply to all those different pot limit games, not just pot limit Omaha as such. So the next guy here, he's got um, double suited ace, aces and kings. <laughs> Highly unlikely, seeing as how this guy in our scenario had. Uh, a pair of aces in the jack-10 double suited, but whatever. He then pops it to what? So, twice the bet, the previous bet, 82, plus the total pot size of 58, 140. So he could only bet 100, of course, if they're all on effective 100 big blind stacks, but especially live, um, when playing pot limit Omaha, there's very often yeah, either no cap or a very limited cap on your total stack size uh, permitted at any given table so you're very often in especially pot limit Omaha games gonna be very deep stacked and your opponents will also be deep stacked just keep in mind that you're always limited by the effective stack at your table or whatever the effective stack is in any given hand you're involved in and in this case of course 140 would be the textbook pot limit raise amount if you are deep stacked and had of course 140 left in your stack. Good, so what does that do? Well, it gives this guy, exactly imagine that, 33% to make that 5-bet call if these guys fold down. And that's pretty much the principle here, guys. Okay, if we have limpers, just look at how that changes here. He isolates this one limper here, and that's no longer 350, of course, but twice the amount to call, 2, plus 1, 2.5, 450. Two limpers, same scenario, there you go. This guy then isolates these two limpers, and there's a guy behind who decides to cold call. So what's this guy's now pot size raise amount? Well, same thing. Principle remains the same. Twice the previous bet, 11, plus this entire pot, which would be the pot at that moment, which is 1450. Right, so there you go. 11, 14, 50, you guys figured out. So 25, 50, let's say some crazy guy decides he's just going to call. 
the three bet not thinking that one of these two guys are going to come over the top, which in Putnam and Omaha is very often going to be the case. Um, whatever. He does make the three bet call. And this guy's four bet raise size now is again the same principle. Uh, twice previous action plus the current pot, which we have at that point at 65.50. So there you go. 116.50. And of course, if he's on 100 big blind. Uh, effective stack, he would only pop it to 100. And you see here that this equity, needed equity to break even in the long run, decreases because he's not making the full pot size raise. Let's take another example. He thinks he doesn't understand the principle of a pot size raise being the pot plus twice the amount to call. And let's say he only raises the current pot size of 65.50. So, what does that do for equities? Well, now all of a sudden, these two guys only need uh, 20, yeah, 23.4 percent equity to make that call. I.e., in this case, probably hit a playable flop. And in pot limit Omaha, that's <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have that a lot, especially with rundown double suited hands. This is the idea of pot size raising, not being the again. I'm just gonna say that again because it's very misunderstood concept. In, you know, in a lot of places you play, it's it's not the current pot. It's twice the amount to call, plus the pot net. Actually, I mean also post flop. Say, we'll back that up. Okay, we get a 350, one cold caller. This guy then three bets to 1550. All right, and let's say we get one caller after the fact for 12. All right, the pot then at that point is going to be exactly 36. And when somebody then leads for a pot size bet, it's going to be, of course, 36 because it is pot, i.e., 36, times twice amount to call, which is zero at that point. And also in that case, the principle holds true. I hope that's clear, guys. Uh, pot size betting, this is very, very important and, yeah, of course, crucial for any pot limit Omaha players out there. But I want to give you guys a shortcut, and this would apply to no limit hold'em, this would apply to anything, yeah, pot limit, whatever, pretty generally. And this is what I had coined three-timing, <laughs> okay? Three-timing the previous action is what's meant with that. So what we're going to do here is, let's take, instead of our pot size formula, pot size bet formula, Let's do three times the previous action. What does that come to? Three. Good. Just update this. Okay. I bet three instead of the 350 as I should. That gives this guy 30.7, let's call it 30.8% or 31% equity needed to make that call. Good. That's only, what, 2.23% less than a full pot size bet or pot size raise say not that big of a difference quite honestly <laughs> so three timing you know I'm not gonna sit there and think oh shit you know maybe in the heat of the battle was it pot times pot plus two what am no that is three timing just to make it simple just keep my life easy and simple let's say there's a limper here good um, if I just three times the bet, now these guys are getting 26%. That is that is a bit of a difference. And if there's two limpers, of course, then they're getting much better odds. And so, again, three times, three time it, plus one per limper or caller, whatever. So then you'd pop it to five. And look, it's almost, again, more or less a pot size bet. These guys are all getting 32% uh, to make that call. So... Again, I hope that's clear, guys. Um, three timing is just a really simple way of looking at most situations. So let's say I three time it here for an open raise, and this guy behind me three times me. Good. What's my break even equity? 30.77%. Hmm, it's amazing. It's exactly the same as here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> precisely because the three time principle gives every player last act before exactly the same equity to make the respective call. And I think that's clear for most of you guys. Um, let's say this guy did three times. Why not? He three times previous action. How much 
equity does this guy need to make that four bet call? Hmm, imagine that. 31%, 31.77 precisely. Same equity this guy needs to make the three bet call. Same equity this guy needs to make the two bet call. Let's see if that holds true for the four bet or the five bet. <laughs> of course it does, because it's yeah, it's mathematically exactly the same. So that's a you know a, like I said, guys, a really good shortcut um, for you just in general, especially for you no limit players. With that, when you three time it, you're basically giving your your opponent the last opponent to act, yeah, more or less two to one on his money, and. Yeah, it's more or less a pot size bet without all the funky calculations and just three times whatever happened prior to that plus one per cold caller, say. Um, so good. This case wouldn't be nine anymore. It would be, yes, plus the caller for 12. If we get a 12 or here, this is no longer going to be just three times the twelve but it's going to be three times that plus this and if you wanted to be really exact then you'd add that two there you go for fifty uh... let's just say we just kind of ignored the open razor and the cold caller again i pop that just to three times the previous action plus one per caller in that case as a four bet and these guys are respectively getting again thirty one percent on the money. So, yeah, this three timing I think is a really good principle. Yeah, it's something you should definitely uh, implement into your games, especially on the fly. You can do that pretty much any time. And for you beginning players, you can go with a very simple principle of three: <laughs> open raise three times the big blind, plus one per limp or whatever. Three bet three times previous action works just fine. Plus one per cold caller say. If not, whatever. 4 bet, 3 times previous action to 27, and you're always giving these guys about, yeah, again, 2 to 1 odds, more or less, to make that call. And they need 30.77% equity to break even in the long run. And that, you know, if you're on the flop, they're not going to have that in a million years with the flush draw. Flush draw is only 19% equity that they'll have, or probability that they'll complete on the next card. Um, yeah, good. And you guys have seen all the tables on on the different outs. I won't go into that greater detail because we have covered that already in the poker math videos. But this, yeah, this again, this pot limit Omaha bet sizing and respective equity calculator is also something uh, that's available to the members of our site, and it's actually in the same workbook, Excel workbook, as the no limit bet sizing calculator.